William Alfred Rogers, or AKA Doc Rogers, born in 1883 in Cherokee County, North Carolina. He moved to Teleco Plains in 1908 to practice medicine during the Babcock Lundler days and practiced for 59 years in the area. He was known as a thinker outside of the box and an eccentric character to all the new ones. And you could see this by his structures and his treatment for his patients that were fairly new ideas for that day. To give a specific example of what kind of eccentric person he was, uh, we had talked to Brenda Lee, who owned his house, and she was telling us the story of how he would, instead of taking logs and putting them in the fireplace, he would take two by fours and uh, push them into the fireplace, and when the, the bottom half had burned up, he would just keep scooting it up until the 2 by 4 was completely gone. He also supported a small stone house across the road downtown and a later a very large three-story house constructed on top of Unicoi Mountain. Uh, the high altitude he thought one day would help his chronic patients. He and his wife lived on the mountain for about six years until the idea for turning the silo into a hotel sprang to life. called the Roundhouse. Uh, it was actually built by a doctor um, who was going to make it into apartments and then the fire marshal shut it down and told me he wasn't allow allowed to do that. So he ended up making it into his home for him and his wife. So we're going to go check this place out. Creaking. I don't yeah. know if you can see it or not, but through the woods there is that concrete. Uh, looks like it goes into the mountain. I don't know if that was a mine they had or what. We made it to the eighth floor, and uh, I'm not stepping on that wood. That's a long drop right there. Um, but see that hole over there, guys? Looks like a mine of some kind. And like up there, you know, at the higher point. Yeah. It looks like it's a crawl space almost. I, I guarantee it's probably, you were probably right, mining. Again, it's part of the Southern Slate Company. The land adjacent to the Civil War Ironworks site, east of Teleco, was reorganized in 1893. Mining included coal, copper, lead, zinc, mica, and iron. Eventually, operations began on a quarry to sell slate, marble, or limestone. Locally termed the Glory Hole, the area included a silo constructed for storage. The roofing industry provided a market for the pulverized slate for the booming business. Now, come join Adventures United as we explore these extremely dangerous abandoned slate mines.
we're coming we just came to the top of the hill behind the roundhouse and uh it's pretty grown up but the slate mines are supposed to be back this way so we're just going to keep moving and hopefully we'll run into them before long slate right here a little farther and it actually as you can see John has a light there but it's going up to the left squeeze though. It's tight. It's really tight back there. <laughs> so we've been walking a little bit. This came into bear crap there. So we might not be alone in here. I mean, and if we're looking at this sign too, that's, that could be a, a clue, even though. Doesn't that say, does that say Dr. Rogers? Yeah, it says Dr. Yeah, Rogers. It does say that. 86, it's obvious. So this is like a cave-in right here. Yeah, this is definitely a cave-in. Yeah, here, John, shine your light around the room, kind of show people what it looks like. It's a, uh, I would say probably by, I don't know what, 20 by 20. This is weird. Seeing this. Like American. Oh, it's weird. American Eagle hoodie. Mattress. There's like two or three pairs of jeans. It makes you wonder what's uh, what was going on here. Dark tanning oil. Either there was some really jumpy kids, or there was some creepy guy bringing people out here. And there's more jeans down there. That's the thing about these abandoned places that I'm finding out is so much weird crap happens in these places. Uh, maybe not, maybe it's just people out here being weird and you know doing their thing. But God, there's a whole wardrobe here. And you gotta think, this is out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I think we're all right, but we've been finding stuff. Blue jeans. What year? It's a cell phone case. You found a cell phone case? Yeah, here. Right there. It's almost like you. Yeah, no one's going to just up and leave their cell phone case like that. Let's see. Oh. 
That's like an iPhone 6 case. Yep. So, you know, that's the cave back there with all the clothes. And uh, then you got the quarry right down here. It just kind of makes you wonder. Uh, you know, we found a cell phone case that looks pretty recent. It fits uh, like an iPhone 6 or 7. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just kids messing around or something, but it, it, it's like Chet said, maybe it's a murder mystery scene. You know, maybe, maybe he's uh, attacking people and bringing them back here and throwing them in this quarry. So it'd be the place to do it. I don't know. Yeah. All I know is we are, this is a very, very strange place. Maybe there's something at the bottom of this quarry lake that could give us one more hint as to who this is. for the night and then get up and try to find the sanitarium is that right chet yep all right so who knows if adventures united will find it but who knows we'll uh Later. we'll try Fine. out in the middle of nowhere but yeah if we're hit we're hitting the sanitarium tomorrow okay yeah, chet's wanting to show us something in the back of his truck so we're walking over now to see what it is yeah you guys are going What is it, Chet? Half a bombshell. <laughs> half a bombshell. Only Chet Guthrie would have Chet, half a bombshell. <laughs> what is that, World War II, man? Nope, Vietnam. You're Vietnam. Vietnam. That is so cool, man. Chet, you're the man. Yep. What, is it platonians? <laughs> it's going to be a pitch black kind of party. Dun dun dun!